this is right. <laughs> I can't follow my own notes. Okay, let's turn to Romans chapter 6. And let's begin reading in verse 1. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, this. And this is, uh, uh, this scripture is talking about baptism. But as we, as we look at this, I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, say this about this. I do not believe this is water baptism that it's talking about here in Romans 6. I believe this is taught being baptized into the body of Christ. And here's what it says in Romans 6, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Boy, this really... Uh, this really contradicts the teaching that Christians are sinners, doesn't it? This really contradicts that, that teaching. Uh, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Now, again, let me emphasize, this is not talking about water baptism. This is about talking about being baptized into the body of Christ 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, chapter 12 and verse 13. Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. And this is talking about water baptism. Uh, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now I want to explain something here. I, want, I just want to explain this. When a person gets saved, what happens is the Lord removes their sin. They are no more accountable uh, for the sin they've committed. They've been forgiven. And they are baptized into the body of Christ. And therefore, we are baptized in water. Now, water baptism doesn't save us. But when we are baptized in water... That is, we are doing something that is, uh, that kind of demonstrates what, ha what has happened spiritually in our life. And so what happened when we get saved, we are dead to sin. And what do you do with somebody when they pass away? You bury them, right? And I've told people that water baptism is actually a watery grave. Yes. And it symbolizes or represents what has spiritually happened in our life. So we are baptized, we are buried, but we don't stay that underneath that water, we, uh, hopefully, but <laughs> we, we, uh, but we come up out of the water, which is symbolic of being raised to a new life in Christ. So that's what this is talking about here. In, this, in the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, we've, we've, been, we've died out to sin, and we have been raised to a, a new life in Christ. We are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The things we once hated, we now love. The things we once loved, we now hate. We are a different individual. New priorities, new goals. Uh, our life is different. We're a change. We're a new creature. And so uh, we, that is uh, symbolized in water baptism. We, are, we go under the water, we're buried, and we come up in newness of life. Therefore we are buried, in verse 4 again, with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted in the likeness of his death, he was buried, right? We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Now, what was his resurrection? He came back to life. And so, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, a different explanation or a, uh, a, a 
a different explanation of the same thing a little bit later in, in my message this morning. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. The old man is the person we was before we got saved. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Dead hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So, the Lord did not die out to his own sin, but he died for our sins, right? And then he was raised into newness of life. So he has a different life now than, than what he had on this earth and, and all. And so it's, uh, uh, he is now our God. Okay, let's look to the fifth chapter of the book of John. We have some more scripture on, on resurrection. Uh, here's what, uh, what the Bible says in John chapter 5, verses 24 to 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That says about this, uh, the same thing, only in different words as John 3.16 said, doesn't it? And you notice that there is, there is no requirements to have everlasting life except to believe on Him. That's the requirement and the only requirement. Okay, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour cometh. Now listen to what it says here in verse 28. Mar marvel not, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Now who does all include? Oh. It includes everybody. That includes the, the saved and the unsaved. All shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So, I see, I believe when the Lord comes that uh, everybody that has ever lived, from Adam clear up until the moment that he comes, I believe that everybody is going to stand before God. Where everybody in the graves are going to be resurrected. It doesn't matter if the person was buried at sea, uh, cremated, uh, buried in the ground. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference. You're going to come forth and you're going to stand in judgment before the Lord. And let me explain this. Uh, and this is the way I explain this. I believe that we are being judged in this life. Okay? And I believe that I can support that with Scripture. That we are being judged in this life. And uh, we're going to be judged when Jesus comes. Is there two judgments? Well, in a sense, yes, and in a sense, no. It's kind of like if, uh, if, if I get arrested for committing a crime, I'm accused of a crime, and I'm tried, and I am found guilty, that is the first phase of my uh, the situation for my crime that I have committed. And that's what's happening now. We're being judged in this life. And, uh, but if I'm found guilty, then there's a second phase to a trial. And that's when it's determined what my punishment's going to be for the crime that I've committed. Uh, and of course, the, the, the sentence I receive is going to address the crime that I committed. 
And this is all the same when it comes to the Lord. We are judged in this life, and we're going to be judged or sentenced, actually, when we stand before the Lord, mm -hmm. according to our works. I believe, and I'm going to get into more scriptures on this later, but I believe that there's different levels of punishment for the unbeliever, for the unsaved, and I believe there's different levels of reward for us that are saved according to our works, the Bible says. Now, uh, it says here in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, that doesn't say 1,000 years. That is not what it says. It says 8,000 years. And there is a difference. In the Greek language, you'll find that the word thousand, if it has a specific uh, numerical value, it will have a prefix. If it, if it means 1,000, it will say 1,000. It won't say thousand it'll say one thousand if it means five thousand it'll say five thousand or ten thousand ten thousand or three thousand but it'll have a, a a prefix in front of it uh but if it does not have a prefix it simply means a whole lot with no specific amount and so in the book of revelation the greek word that was used did not have a prefix so that as it may. I want to explain this verse of scripture. I think that uh, you know there's a lot of teachings and and a lot of people believe in a lot of different resurrections and, and so forth. A man asked me one time how many resurrections that I believed in. And I just got to thinking, well there's the resurrection of Christ. He's the first in the resurrection, right? But even before that you could say that Lazarus was resurrected wasn't he? And we could find many resurrections, but we're going to deal with, uh, this morning, we're dealing with uh, uh, a kind of different than the resurrections in this life and so forth. Now, I want, to, I want to share something with you this morning, and this is the way I explain this scripture. When a baby is born in the flesh, that baby is alive spiritually and physically. Okay, if something should happen and that baby should get killed or die of a disease or, or, or accident or whatever, I believe that baby would go to heaven. I believe that baby's salvation is secure because that baby is alive spiritually and, of course, physically also. So there is spiritual life and there is physical life. Now, as that baby lives and as it grows and and gets bigger and and uh, begins to do some thinking and learn things and pretty soon that baby will become rebellious how many knows babies get rebellious and they get rebellious at a pretty young age too don't they well at some point in their life that baby dies spiritually okay it is separated from God through rebellion and disobedience and, and so forth. Now you say that's that's kind of hard, Pastor John, for to say that babies, uh, you know, lose out with God, but they really do. That's the way that it is, and and we was all went through that and 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 so forth, and then we began to be trained and 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 so forth. Well, at what age then do they do they lose their salvation? Well, I just don't think it's the same with everybody, and I'm glad that God decides that and not me. Uh, but then there comes a time when that baby uh, gives at, at some age, maybe five years old, maybe 10 years old, maybe 50 years old, that person will give their life to the Lord. Okay, when that person gives their life to the Lord, they have been resurrected. Amen. Spiritual resurrection. They've come back to life. They've been raised from the dead. The Bible said we are dead in sins and trespasses. And when we come to the Lord, 
We are resurrected from the dead. We receive spiritual life. We are saved. And so that's the first resurrection of a human being is when they give their life to the Lord. If they live their whole life and never commit their life to Christ, then they don't have a spiritual resurrection. So now let's read this verse of Scripture over again with that in mind. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That is the person that got saved. Mm -hmm. Blessed and holy is, 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 uh, is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no part. Now, what is the first death? The first death, I believe, is when that person lost out with God. That's the first death, when, when that baby became rebellious and disobedient and, and you know, and, and those things and lost out with God, like I say, when that happens between that individual and the Lord, okay, but there comes a second death. The second death is when the individual that had the first death and was not resurrected. Now they have a second death. Death means to be separated from God. That's what death is. So blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. He got saved. So the person that got saved, there is no, uh, the second death hath no power on him. And I, and I believe this is talking about the final resurrection, the final judgment. But they shall be priests, the person that had part in the first in the in the first resurrection, shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. And I'm not going to go into the thousand years and different teachings on that, and, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go there this morning. But uh, that uh, uh, we do reign with Christ, don't we? We are priests, the Bible says, and building a, a spiritual house unto him, unto the Lord, to offer up spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now this chapter is what I call the resurrection chapter. And this is where we learn a lot about the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to begin in verse 12. Verse 12. And here's what Paul writes to us. Now if Christ be preached that he rose, speaking about the Lord, that he rose from the dead, how shall some among you, uh, among you that how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, there was a group in the, in the first century uh, church and in the time of Christ called the Sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection. And I, I don't think they believed in an afterlife at all. Uh, and someone said, of course, we've all heard that's why they're so sad, you see, right? Absolutely. That's why they're so sad, you see. Anyway. Uh, verse 13 says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Well, we know that right there in the, in the, in the, the time of the cross, right after the cross, that Jesus was seen of Mary and of the disciples, and there was a time that he was seen of over 500 people at one time. So Jesus was seen from a lot of people after that he rose from the dead. So he definitely was resurrected. Verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. So this whole thing, going to church, Christianity, what all Christians are doing for the Lord, and all that, it's all in vain if Christ did not raise from the dead. And that's a fact. But that is the foundation of Christianity. We are the only religion on the planet that has a risen uh, Savior or the centerpiece, founder, whatever, of the religion uh, has risen from the dead. 
Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sins. Our sins, forgiveness of sins, hinges not only on the fact that Jesus died and shed his blood uh, and took our place on the cross, was punished for our sins, but also that would not be sufficient if he had not risen from the dead. The resurrection is vital in our experience and in our faith, our walk with God. Then they also, which are fallen asleep, are perished. Everybody that's died, if the Lord didn't raise, they're done. It's over. That's it. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most, most miserable. This whole thing's a big joke that we call Christianity coming to church and doing all the things that we do. That's a big joke if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. The whole thing, that's the, what's the, what's the phrase? That's the, the, the hinge pin. What do they call that? The hinge pin. Hinge pin, yeah. Okay, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For all, uh, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall be all made alive. That scripture that I just read, that in Christ shall all be made alive. I thought about this, and, and, and I'm not sure just what you think about this, but did, when the Lord comes, not only the saved, but the unsaved is going to be raised from the dead. If Jesus had not died, would the unsaved be raised from the dead at some point? I don't think so. I don't think so. But he did rise from the dead, and so all the dead, saved and unsaved, uh, shall be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after they, they that are Christ, at his coming. And I believe that means at the time of his coming. Yes. That's when we're going to be made alive. Uh, and so we can, that's a different subject, and I'm not going to uh, say much about that, except that I believe in soul sleeping. And okay. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> okay. But we'll go with it for another day. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it later. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he hath put all rule and authority under his power. Uh, there's a lot here that I've got. I've got all of this, but uh, I want to skip down to verse uh, 38 this morning. Where Paul, and there's a lot, read this, take time and, 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 and read this out for yourself for what it says here in Scripture about the resurrection. Verse 38 says, but, and, and uh, it, it's talking about the body, uh, it says, but God, God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is... Uh, the, the flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There's also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another uh, star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. We are going to receive a spiritual body when the Lord comes. When those that are in the grave, they're going to come out of the grave in a spiritual body. And all of us that are alive and remain, 
when the Lord comes, our body is going to be changed to a spiritual body when he appears. Uh, and we will be all gathered together as one, and we will meet the Lord and forever be with the Lord. Uh, now, we're not going to always be in the air with the Lord, okay? I believe that the resurrection is going to take place. Everybody's going to be gathered before the Lord, and there's going to be a saved and unsaved. There's going to be a great separation, and the, the unsaved is going to be in one group and the saved in another. And I believe that the unsaved then are going to be cast into the lake of fire where they're going to spend eternity. And the saved are going to, uh, the Lord's going to say, enter into the joys of the Lord. And I believe we're going to come to this earth, back to this earth from being in the air, going to come back to this earth and we're going to spend eternity on this planet earth. That's what I believe is going to happen at the coming of the Lord. Uh, the, the parable of the sheep and the goats is, uh, I, I believe, there's a very good explanation of what happens uh, at the coming of the Lord and, uh, and, the, and the great judgment. So we are going to have a spiritual body. We are still going to be individual beings. I, just, I don't believe that there's going to be just... Uh, uh, we're going to be just part of some uh, some uh, big body and not be individuals anymore. But we're going to be uh, have spiritual bodies and and uh, we're going to be individuals. And I, I I wish the Bible told us more about what's going to happen in eternity. The Bible's very vague on that. It doesn't say uh, very little about the activity. Uh, when the Bible talks about uh, streets of gold and, and uh, streams of crystal and, and all those things and mansions and all those things, I think all of that is symbolic language. I don't believe we're going to be walking on streets of gold. Who would want to? I mean, that would, that would not be a very, that would be walking, like walking on concrete, wouldn't it? Uh, concrete gives your sore feet and legs to, to walk on it and, and uh just the kind of bodies we're going to have. I believe that our bodies are going to be like Jesus' body was when he was resurrected from the dead. That's what I tend to believe. And it says, uh, and the body, the Bible says it's, it, 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 it is, uh, how does that scripture go? Uh, it does not appear what we shall be, but this, we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. And so we are going to be like the Lord. And I think we're gonna, it's going to be a very orderly existence. I believe it's going to be fun, uh, exciting. I think we're going to really enjoy things. We're not going to have any more pain. Lee can throw her walker away. Forget about that. And uh, my hips aren't going to be hurting anymore. Uh, and all the things that we suffer in this life, it's going to be gone. It's going to be utopia. And so we're going to be raised a spiritual body. We're going to be individuals. Uh, and uh, it's just going to be a wonderful thing uh, when that resurrection takes place. Now, let's look at, uh, at after the, 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 the resurrection. And here's one thing that I, that I want to use for an example about how it's going to be. See, the Bible does tell us a little something about uh, what's going to happen after the resurrection, but we don't have a full picture. In fact, I think we, the Bible tells very little. But in Luke chapter 20, verse 27 through 40, uh, it says, Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny there is any resurrection, and they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, and he died without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now this was for the purpose of carrying on the family name. So if a man was married and he didn't have any kids, and he died, then his brother was to marry his wife in order to bring forth children from the family. And so they hear this, the Sadducees is saying, uh, 
So what happened? So what if a what if a man married a woman and he had seven brothers and he passed away and the brother, uh, the next brother took the took the woman to wife and he passed away and then the next one and so forth till this woman was married to all seven of these men. So then they asked Jesus, who's going to be the husband of this lady in the resurrection? Well, Jesus answers that. He said unto them, verse 34, the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that word <coughs> And the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Oh, I've, had, I've heard people say, oh, you know, you're going to be reunited with your wife in heaven. That's not true. We're not, there's not even going to be male or female in heaven. We're all going to be the same gender. And we're going to be with the Lord. And we're all going to be separate individuals in spite of the different teachings that you hear this is what the scripture uh, teaches verse 36 neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of god being the children of the resurrection now that the dead are raised even moses showed at the bush when he calleth the lord the god of abraham and of the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but, but of the living, for all live unto him. In other words, in heaven, a, 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 a man is not going to die and pass his wife on to his brother. We're all going to be alive in, in heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Here, then certain of the scribes answering him said, Master, thou hast well said, and after they thus not ask him any questions anymore. So we're not going to be male or female in heaven. We're not going to have wives. We're going to know each other. I think I'm going to know Betty in heaven, and uh, she's going to recognize me, and I'm going to recognize her, and, and same way with my dad, and and uh, many other people that we've known, Christians that we've known, that's went on, uh, you know, has passed from this life. We're going to know one another, and we're going to have a great life together, and it's just going to be a wonderful time. But there is, uh, we have to be resurrected, and I've, I've said this at, at just about every funeral that I've ever done. I have made the statement that uh, uh, this person that's passed away, if, if I was feel secure that person was saved i make the statement well you want to see this individual again you it's it's very simple all you got to do is make sure you're saved and you'll see this person again you'll see your loved one your family member whoever your mom your dad your children whatever the situation might be you'll see them again after the lord comes that this all takes place and god puts us all together and so this morning as we Look at this situation. The, I, I, uh, I, I think about this also when I uh, have done uh, funerals and, and uh, I, I, uh, I use a scripture where the Bible tells us that God created us and, and I explain to people that he's provided all that we have need of and so forth. But God's plan does not end at the time that we die. Uh, his plan does not come to an end, and we simply cease to exist. I know that there are there are uh, 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 groups that call themselves Christians, even that believes that once you die, you simply cease to exist. That's the end of it for you. There's no more. I know that one group teaches that if you're uh, if if you're not saved, if you don't embrace their philosophies and, and their creeds and so forth, that's what's going to happen to you. You simply are going to just no, exist no more. That's it. Bang. It's just uh, like when, when an animal dies. How many knows when an animal dies, that's the end of its existence? It really is. That's the end of that, that the existence of that animal. Well, there's religious Christian groups or calls themselves Christians 
that that's what they believe happens if you're not saved, that you just, you see, people don't like the idea of hell. They don't like the idea of hell. That doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? Hell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minister on that next week, uh, ne next Sunday. But uh, the fact is, there is a hell, and there is a uh, to be shunned and a heaven to be gained. And uh, that's part of, of, of Christianity. That's the teaching of the Word of God. Uh, but there's going to be a resurrection. And uh, so we're going to be resurrected from the dead. And we're going to ever be with the Lord. To live with Him in eternity. So uh, that's the, my lesson on the fifth item from the sixth chapter of, of the book of of. Uh, Hebrews, uh, and so then uh, we will, uh, I'll be finishing this series up next uh, next Sunday, and I'm just kicking ideas around and kind of seeking the Lord of what to preach after that, uh, but I think I'll probably be doing some preaching on let us go on into perfection. I think that would be good. Uh, so with that, let us stand this morning. Praise God. And let us just look to the Lord this morning. Anybody have a need, need prayer or anything before we dismiss?